Hey, Composer Gloves here. This is another video on the how to make your first song in FL12. And today we're going to cover the piano roll. So you know how to load channels up. You know about the channel rack. You're familiar with this here browser, at least enough to do the important stuff and the global controls. And if your computer is crackling, now you'll know why. So let's talk about the piano roll. So you have a synthesizer you have loaded up and you've probably gone on and looked up some synthesizers because uh, you've probably started working on something. And so you've experimented and you've probably come across this thing called Harmless. It's a synthesizer. I happen to know it starts out really loud. So, so we have this and now you want to lay down some notes. Well, let's cover really quick the basics of doing that. So we go to our piano roll and this is our piano roll. Now you can scale it, do all sorts of things. It's really nice that way. And the same rules for navigating and the sequencer apply here, which is covered in video too. So if you're wondering how I can scroll and do this mystical, magical stuff, uh, go watch that video. Oh, well, I guess I'll tell you real quick. You basically you hold down control, zoom, scroll with your mouse wheel that zooms in and out, hold down control, push your mouse wheel down, drag it up or down, it changes the width. And now this is important in the piano roll. And if you hold your mouse wheel down, you can drag and drag around. This is important in the piano roll, however, because this changes whether or not you can see your notes. So that may be important to you because seeing a keyboard is not exactly the best option. But you notice you can click over here and you can hear a preview. The closer to the edge you click, the louder the note, the farther away, the softer the note. That's pretty much true for all of the plugins, even on the keyboard itself. So just so you know, that is an option. Now we're gonna cover the basics of laying down notes real quick. So there are basically uh, three tools I use when I'm in a menu like this. You have the pencil tool, it allows you to go like that. And as you can see, we have things snapping to all sorts of weird places. Why is that happening? Well, we have our thing on one half step. Let's put it to a cell. You'll hold down the right mouse button to delete notes and okay so we're putting down notes oh and our tempo is really slow so let's make it faster and we want to zoom in because we're working in one measure now this is a measure here are your beats these gray lines if you don't know what i'm talking about it's music theory stuff you should learn music theory especially if you intend to make music so just a recommendation so you might wonder how I just did that. Well, let's cover this real quick because I'm used to just doing stuff. So we, I just click and I put down some notes and you can see we zoom in, they've got these bars in there. Don't worry too much about the bars when you're starting out. And you have this E5, G5. This is just the note you've put down and you can change the duration by clicking and dragging. And you'll notice that if you have a note a certain length and you click it and you click somewhere else, you're dropping notes that length. So if I click this short note, I'm dropping short notes again. So that's a really nifty way of sort of changing the value you're using uh, besides the dragging every single note type thing. Now you hold down control and drag to select a group of notes. You'll hold down shift and drag to create a clone of those notes. Now they'll only move side to side when you first clone them, but if, as soon as you let go of shift, you can move them up or down. And you can go up an octave or down an octave. And now we have this. So you click up here to move your transport around, you hit space bar to play. And you have that. So that's easy. And you can also group, select, and hit delete to delete multiple notes. Um, another useful feature is that let's say you've got something repeating and it's speeding up, you can control oh, you can do that. You can select the notes like that. You can also hit control and click the note, and boom, it selects them. And you can hold, click shift and drag and it will create copies. And you can do it again. So hold ground control, hit the note, and boom, you just selected him. And you can go like this. And let's say we want to make a G major chord. But let's say you want to select a group of notes over a huge period of time. You don't want to make this huge box, but they're in a certain range. Well, you can hold down control and go like this and click and drag. And boom, you have now selected them really nifty if you want to delete them or maybe you want to delete all the C's in a track on this particular B 
because remember, we're working in a pattern on this particular pattern. You could do that. All right. Is there, uh, there's a few other things. So this is the pencil tool. You also have a paint tool, which allows you to paint down a whole bunch of notes of the same length and to change the notes, you can drag them and now you're, you're going along. Honestly, I never really used the paintbrush. I am not totally experienced in how exactly this behaves. I've always used the pencil tool with the previous tricks I just showed you. So, just so you know. Uh, amongst other things, um, I occasionally use the cut tool. I'm trying to just say things that are practical here instead of just like slaughtering you with crazy amounts of detailed knowledge. That's for like other videos where you're like discovering tips and tricks now as opposed to methods. So the cut tool does exactly what you think. You can draw it and it will cut it up. Another thing that actually a friend showed me, or at least I noticed, was I have my grid sitting right here enough. And if I have my notes selected, I can hit Alt-U and it will chop it for me to fit that. And there's all these options right here, but that was just a really cool trick that I just was like, what? I didn't even know that was really an option because I just never used it. I never bothered to look. So you can do that and you can do that for all of them and get this and you have to hit accept. That's why it keeps resetting. Already. So, so yeah, that's that nifty little trick. All right. So now I'm going to cover Porta. What is Porta? Well, it slides the end of your note to the next note and it's best to just describe it to the start of the next note. So here we have our Porta setting. Now this only works for native stuff. Third party stuff just behaves differently every time. And so you're just gonna have to get familiar with whatever your third party stuff is if you have that. So let's write a quick arpeggio. And there's a cool way to do this, but I'm just gonna type the notes in. So you hear how it kind of does a little pitch bend at the end of every note, like wop, 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 wop. And if we were to play that, and if we didn't have Porta on, and the only way I can really think to get rid of Porta is to do this, unfortunately. And if anyone knows a way to get rid of notes like that as a group section, I know there are hotkeys. There's got to be. But anyways, this is the difference. So you can definitely hear a difference compared to the previous way. Versus. So that's Porta. Could be a cool option you want. And then you have this thing called the slide note, which you turn on by selecting this. And first, you have to have a note that's not a slide note. So if you have a note, it's playing. And, and you want it to slide to another note, like a pitch band. Well, you can select the slide note. This note's not, this note does not play by itself, but it'll slide to this note according to how long this note is. So, but as you see, it doesn't play this note. This is a silent note. It's just a command to slide down here. And so if this note were much shorter, it would slide right down to the C and play a C until this note, the note that's not the slide note is off. So that's how slide notes work. So useful, and yeah, you may need to overlap notes if you intend to uh, slide back to your original note. Uh, one other cool thing, so if you lay down a chord, so let's say you lay down an A chord, and you want to arpeggiate this, well, you can select them all like so, go to a tools, and go to arpeggiate and it will arpeggiate things for you. And you can select the range and do all sorts of nifty things. That's another quick tip of something you can mess with. Again, I'm just covering some basic stuff so that you can start working. One other thing is if you have a bunch of channels, like let's just clone this guy, and this guy is doing something. And you say, oh man, I've got some complicated chords going on here. I, how am I gonna figure out what to write in this pattern like? And you see, we have these ghost notes, which I forgot I had those on. And they might be on by default now, but as you can see, there's nothing here on this other channel. And on this channel, like I've got this going on. Well, how, how is there a way I could see what's going on with, 
because without having that there, it can be confusing trying to remember all that. Well, you click your little arrow, you go to helpers, ghost notes, ghost channels, which is alt V. I don't, I've never turned it off, so I don't know why I'd want to. And uh, boom, there they are. And now I can match notes up perfectly and it will be no problem. It's more of a big deal when you have a whole bunch of different sounds and chords and things going on. But this is just to demonstrate. Let's say you want to switch to that channel. Well, easy peasy. You just uh, double right click. Right click? Yeah, it's right click. And boom, you're now on this, this channel. So you just switched from this one to this one. But if you want to go back, you have to do piano roll because there's no notes that are gray on that one. But if you were to put a note like way up here, make it kind of long, and then right click our one of our ghost notes, takes us to this channel. And if we want to go back, we can right click this one. And so that's a nifty way of navigating without having to go over here and click and do all sorts of mumbo jumbo over there. There's a few other important things. Uh, you can hold down. Well, let's go over here. So let's make this something pleasant. We'll make it a G major, a C major chord. So you have all these things down here. They look kind of like these balls at right angles. I don't know, some sort of math equation. And this is your note velocity. So you can change how loud the notes are in the piano roll. So you select the note you want to change. Because if you don't select it, it'll change all the notes at that particular moment in time. And you see the volume, which is what this line inside represents, uh, begins to change. Well, so you move that around. My comment about not worrying about it as a beginner is I mean changing the line from the note itself. So you move this around and it changes that. So you can make it soft and now it's soft versus this guy which will be much louder because this is much closer to the top. Now you can set this bottom row to be a whole bunch of different things. You can also change channels real quick. You can change channels using this. So you can go to the other harmless or snare or clap or kick. You can also uh, change this bottom thing to be note panning. So up would put it in one speaker versus the other. And so that's an option. You have cutoff frequencies, volume. Now these three, these are controls. Volume is, you get this grid thing right here and you can click and drag to create a line. That's your volume line. You can alternatively right click and drag to make a smooth clip but your uh now this is your channel volume so this is controlling this thing okay important note it does not control your velocities on your separate notes are still active so you'd have to go to velocities and change that which i changed the thing back the channel volume back to relatively loud all the time and Automating this, I don't totally recommend because mixing later becomes a disaster zone. I instead recommend making an automation clip by right clicking and making one. We'll talk about that later, but doing it in here is like a disaster. There are some other ways about going about things in the piano roll, but I don't recommend them as a method. So I'm going to leave them out because I think it will just trip up beginners that it will, it will cause you to learn techniques that aren't the best for th there are better ways of doing those things. For example, bass wobbles and LFO and filter movement are all should be handled by using automation clips. Unless you have a specific reason for doing something specifically in the piano roll, that would make it a more advanced technique. So we're not going to cover that right now. One other quick note, you can hold down Alt and right click. And you can scrub through your audio, which is a really nifty tool. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. If you have any other techniques that you consider basic, um, drop those also in the comments and they will be greatly appreciated. I'm sure by people trying to learn FL studios. Um, I hope you get to making that boss track and laying down several synthesizers. Oh, oh, one more thing. Kick. You can also set it in a piano roll and change things and do everything the same, except for now it's like, it's a sampler. What a sampler is, is it plays back your sample, but it'll also change it to basically play like a keyboard. Um, there are a variety of things that can also go wrong with this, but we're going to leave. Well, I guess I'll cover them super fast too. You may have loaded up a sample. I haven't had this problem in FL 12 yet. And it, at least I haven't found a sample that has this problem yet in FL 12. It'd be the sample's fault. You grab a sample, you load it up and it plays the same, the same pitch on every single key. This can be so annoying. And all you have to do is come in here, 
and you need to just check your time stretching methods in your loop region. So if you have something you click and it keeps re-triggering, make sure you have use loop points off and you have your time stretching where uh, the time is at zero. It's not at like 0 0.01 or whatever. Because, uh, yeah, just so you know, those are things to check if for whatever reason you're experiencing difficulties in that area. That's another thing I really wish I had known. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe. And have a blessed day.